Good morning, Paul Georgi from Allendale. It's May 3rd, 2010. This morning, dollar is stronger, crude is weaker, and gold is uh, mixed here this morning. So not getting a lot of influences from outside markets. However, we did have the Bank of China raise their reserve again. So that is uh, causing some turmoil and could cause some uh, some weakness here to the grain markets, but uh, uh, other factors are dominating there. Greece is, uh, has completed its uh, deal. The EU and the IMF have uh, put $145 billion together to, uh, to help Greece out of their situation. The oil slick in the Gulf is becoming more and more of a, an issue uh, for traders, especially in because they're concerned about will the uh, supply of oil uh, be able to, uh, will the, the ocean traffic be able to continue in the Gulf, and uh, that could slow down some supplies here into the U.S., which could tighten inventories and support energy prices. Goldman Sachs also came out with some numbers this morning. They're expecting that uh, crude oil could trade as high as 94.50 within the next three months. So that's uh, providing some support to the uh, the crude complex here today. In the grains specifically, we've got uh, the uh, China purchases of corn was an issue last week. It's still circulating this week. The rumors uh, started that they bought a hundred to two or one to two cargoes and. By the end of the week, uh, rumors have uh, circulated that they bought anywhere from 10 to 12 cargoes, which would be anywhere from 500 to 600,000 tons. And it appears more likely that they did make those kind of purchases. China themselves sold about 4 million tons of corn out of their reserve, still didn't have any of impact on uh, local prices and interior prices in China. Therefore, corn importing corn is still cheaper than uh, buying it from the reserve, and the problem is the reserve is running out of uh, corn uh, from the numbers that we get anyway. So uh, it uh, would suggest that they're going to be uh, in looking from, for more corn uh, from time to time. doesn't necessarily mean they have to buy it from the U.S., however. Uh, the other factor that traders are watching today in the grains is planting progress here this afternoon. Uh, how much more corn did we get planted? Uh, it appears like it could be a significant amount. Uh, again, up into that 65-70% uh, range. Uh, and then uh, emergence of corn is going to be looked at. And I just took a trip uh, from northern Illinois down to uh, the St. Louis area here over the weekend. and. The further south you get, the corn looks fantastic, and it looks like uh, they've got very good stands uh, starting so far. So that, that will uh, show that corn crop is uh, is doing very well. Over in the soybeans, uh, looking for a little lower market there uh, this morning. The uh, surprise was the big deliveries. We had 1,044 contracts of beans delivered uh, this morning. Uh, none delivered on the first day of delivery, and here we come with uh, over a thousand contracts on the second day. So that could uh, weigh on the uh, the bean market here a little bit, cause some uh, more movement of uh, of uh, positions out of that May contract, and uh, it uh, that's why we're looking at a little lower market there. Technical support in the July contract crosses at 988 in. Uh, if we take that level out, we could see some uh, additional stops being activated. In the wheat market, uh, the news is the uh, hard red winter wheat tour is uh, starting here this morning from Kansas City. They'll be uh, taking a look at the wheat crop throughout uh, Kansas, and uh, we'll be getting information on that uh, throughout the, uh, the week. Stay tuned to Allendale, and we'll give you updates as, uh, as soon as we get them. The uh, support, uh, or the, the wheat market, has uh, got resistance around 508 in the July contract, and then again at around the 515. Uh, if we could break through that, we're, we should be uh, looking for uh, more fund uh, liquidation. The funds are heavily short in the wheat contract right now. Uh, more strength than if you 
we get above the 100 day and 200 day moving average in wheat those are going to be critical areas and it could change the the funds mind and uh, we could see some uh, short liquidation there which could drive prices higher at a time when uh, usually the wheat market has a tendency of going lower. So those are things you got to monitor there and we'll stay in touch with us. We'll be happy to keep you informed. In the livestock, uh, cattle trade, uh, of course there's no cash trade this morning, uh, no bids out there at this point in time, but cutout values improved uh, slightly on Friday, choice up 25, uh, select up 6. The uh, improvement in demand is continuing to support this uh, cattle trade and improvement in uh, economic numbers. Uh, the cattle have got a high correlation to the stock market and to the economy, and uh, those are things that we're watching very closely, and those have got very positive influences on cattle and the demand for beef at this point in time. In the hogs, uh, cash trade there is steady with a firm tone. Uh, the feeling is that uh, the cash market could firm up in the hogs as the day goes along. Cutout values were down only 24 cents, but the futures closed uh, strong there on Friday. Uh, still in an uptrend, still a very positive uh, market there. And from the technical look, uh, you still need to continue to buy breaks. If anybody's got any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Allendale at uh, 800-262-7538. We'll be happy to answer any questions. And we wish everybody a very successful trading day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning.